Yeah, I've been uh, looking at the local election uh, 2018 back in the UK and um, been following a few blog posts and the BBC website and um, I must say I'm intrigued to see uh, some of the names stepping up to the plate uh, to criticise how Labour's actually done. Um, now, this is the BBC website here, and um, at the top of the page here, you can see the number of Labour councillors has, has gone up by 63, the number of Tories has gone down 20, the Lib Dems, no one can argue that the Lib Dems will be feeling very pleased with this result. Um, they've gained 59 council seats, but actually three control of three councils. Uh, two have changed hands, and one which we had no uh, overall control has now gone under the control of the Lib, Lib Dems. Uh, UKIP has had an absolute disaster, um, and uh, others, I guess that's sort of independents or smaller parties. Uh, I mean, others have done rather better than the Green Party. Um, now, Caroline Lucas and Jonathan Bartley have been on sort of saying, oh, well, the Greens have done really well considering everything's so unfair. Um, one suspects that um, uh, the interview which Caroline did yesterday on the BBC where, uh, I think it was Joe Coburn, said, uh, well, why would they vote for you? They may as well vote for Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and the Greens don't seem to have got to grips with the fact that their 2015 manifesto uh, was embraced um, and Ed Miliband soundly rejected. Now that's important coming up to what I'm going to be saying next when we just look at the, uh, the news feed on the BBC website, which you know, one has to say is, is actually pretty hilarious. Um, I call it analysis paralysis. Um, their faculties of critical thought, uh, due to their visceral hatred of Jeremy Corbyn, um, have deserted them. Uh, and uh, anyway, let's just put that to one side for a minute and let's just go down here. And uh, here we are, at quarter to six. Um, this is Swedish time, I think it's uh, 10 to 6 here in Sweden, uh, we're an hour ahead of the UK. Um, a ceiling to Jeremy Corbyn's report, now this guy is saying. Um, a disappointment rather than a disaster. Well, Labour had a really, really good um, showing in the local elections in 2014. And if you remember the previous two... Uh, local elections under the Corbyn leadership um, were seen as a big test and uh, uh, led to leadership challenges and all the rest of it. Um, and the polling of those, is, or the extrapolations from the polling from, from those local elections for the uh, 2017 vote um, were highly Bias. Bias is the only word you can go with. Confirmation bias. Um, uh, the sampling and the polling is, is suspect. Uh, the whole methodology. I mean, I pointed out in a couple of blogs today in a discussion on um, off Guardian that uh, the polling companies effectively are as malignant as the ratings agencies in the finance world. They're supposed to be independent. Um, and yet uh, you see that they sort of bend their logic a little bit like um, paid independent experts at court or whatever. Um, these are not without selection bias, without slant. I'm writing a novel at the moment and um, part of the current chapter is looking at the slant and uh, uh, different chronologies so uh, looking at prehistory um, and the Bronze Age chronology for instance differs 
between uh, 60 years and 100 odd years and it makes quite a difference to the uh, emphasis or significance of different events um, and what you do that but that, that slant and bias and, and uh, uh, procrustean is another way with the procrustean bed uh, sort of basically cutting off the limbs of the patient to make them fit in the bed or the um, and, and this is something that we see quite a lot of in, in the, uh, uh, the in the coverage but anyway that was this chap saying that uh, there's a limit to call these supports uh, some surprise that Birmingham City Council is retained in Labour control now this is the first one now Emily Thornbury, uh, Labour has dragged its feet on tackling anti-Semitism. Um, one does wonder whether this is a precursor to uh, another stalking horse for a, for a Corbyn leadership challenge. Um, I was surprised to, I was surprised to see that, uh, but I was very surprised on the question time when Keir Starmer turned out to have actually been the uh, uh, Crown Prosecution uh, advocate for the Litvinenko case, um, looking at the recent pantomime of scribble poisonings, D notice and all. Um, but uh, Emily Thornbury, Marisford judge. Um, you remember John Burko giving the telling off to Boris Johnson for referring to Emily Thornbury uh, by her uh, title by marriage to her husband who's a judge. Um, from memory, was she the one that said something about white man, white white van man in the 2015 election? Uh, I mean, I do like her, um, but I do question the wisdom of challenging. Uh, if indeed she is uh, part of a, a kind of a, a, a party to run as a, a stalking horse, Angela Legal, of course, fulfilled that role in uh, the uh, first leadership, or oh no, the second leadership challenge, if you if you recall. Um, so Sheffield mayoral election here, you see Dan Dar Jarvis has resoundingly won that. I used to live in Sherwell District Council. It's no surprise that the Conservatives have held that. In fact, that my best friend's father, um, David Green, was uh, on the council for the Conservatives for many years and chairman of the planning committee. Um, where are we now? Andy Burnham lots to celebrate in Manchester, uh, but then he does go say overall the results are mixed. Um, and there are feelings of pain and hurt in Jewish communities that need to be addressed. Well, no one likes anti-Semitism. I, uh, I, there are anti-Semites. Um, no, no one denies that. Um, but it's simply ridiculous to say that the anti-Semitism which exists in Labour doesn't exist in other parties. I, Caroline Lucas was very good on this uh, when she appeared on Question Time a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, it is a fact that anti-Semitism exists and therefore it will have a representative sample across all parties. I mean, it's pretty much a minority thing. Now, when you start to uh, equate Holocaust revisionism or... Uh, opposition to Zionism and particularly opposition to Netanyahu Zionism and the current uh, uh, ongoing war crimes of the Israeli state under the Netanyahu government um, to call that anti-semitism is really rather silly um, although uh, I think the EU and indeed France have been talking about broadening the uh, definition of Semitism to include um, anti-Zionism uh, as if uh, opposing the political ideology of Zionism um, is somehow anti-Semitic. Um, 
and they, they, they kind of squeeze this one in by claiming it's a sort of a beard for anti-semitism now I just don't buy that um, and this is uh, it's a classic when did you stop beating your wife type of accusation um, anyone that's been married to a lawyer will uh, I used to be married to a lawyer uh, will will know I mean this is sort of in lawyer training 101 uh, you know being taught to ask these these questions i.e. Uh, putting someone in a position of having to prove a negative it can't be done it's a logical fallacy um, and uh, it's a fun sport for uh, people that enjoy that kind of intellectual wordplay debating societies and let's face it the current lot of academic professional politicians who have gone into politics from student politics and uh, you know frankly have zero experience of any sort of serious business or professional life outside of politics um, these sorts of people really enjoy those sorts of games and they think that those sorts of games um, succeed in uh, a non-coercive environment of commerce uh, but I digress uh, but there's Andy Burnham in on the hat we're not not surprised about that the other one is David Miliband um, and his four hundred thousand dollar a year cushy number over at the United Nations or whatever it is in um, the neoliberal wing of the Labour Party uh, coming after Jeremy Corbyn and the you know, the new resuscitated the resurgent and reinvigorated Labour Party. Now let's just go down and see a few more of the people that are throwing in these uh, uh, barbs. See Bromley is uh, still Tory. That's lots of friends live in Bromley. It should come as no surprise. Uh, it's a surprise that Labour actually have, does it say two seats on that council? Uh, well, Labour is the second largest party, but eight seats, eight seats in Bromley, I mean, wow, you wouldn't, uh, you know, if you didn't know that, you wouldn't bet the house on that being the case. Anyway, Sadiq Khan, many Jews don't feel comfortable voting Labour. Well, I'm sorry Sadiq. Um, that may well be right um, if they read the Jewish Chronicle or if they read the British dead tree media um, the the crew at Judas would uh, would disagree with you quite strongly and uh, you do no service to the great history and tradition of Jewish radicalism um, and uh, you know, you, Mr. Khan, and your right-wing Blairite uh, version of, of, of politics—that's what people don't like, and that's what people reject. There's a certain uh, segment of the bourgeoisie that that that, that, that agrees with you, um, but uh, what the fight back? From the whole spectrum of, of, of left to right in, in, in traditionally thinking people uh, what they're fighting against is your kind of top-down finger wagging do gooding um, do as I say not as I do approach to life you're an elitist you're a, uh, an authoritarian um, I dare say you're not a very good mayor, you're an even worse Labour politician and um, you know it would be interesting uh, to see if you plan a similar route back into politics to uh, that other failed former mayor uh, Boris Johnson uh, and, and then of course the sainted and the uh, hated and despised Ken Livingstone 
uh, never as a politician divided people um, more than Ken Livingston. Uh, now, people call Ken Livingston a, a, an anti-Semite. Right? The Judas crew, they, I've seen a lot of negative stuff about Ken Livingston coming from the Judas direction. And um, I, I don't know, I don't know Ken Livingston. I must say I didn't get from him a, a, a feeling that he felt he needed to defend himself against any accusations from John Mann when John Mann doorstepped him in that sort of famous uh, sort of, um, I don't know, it was almost like a scene out of the Crucible as John Mann hysterically wagged his finger and shouted witch, witch, witch or anti-Semite um, at, at Ken Livingston. Um, I don't know. Um, and I'm not going to carry wa water for Ken Livingston. I, I have other criticisms of Ken Livingston related to childcare under his stewardship of the Greater London Council. Anyone that knows Pine Mash films and um, has watched the, uh, the, the, those films will know what I'm talking about uh, when um, the maker of those films, uh, Phil Maloney, uh, tackled um, Ken Livingston actually about an orphanage that had been an old children's home that had been demolished um, which effectively was the demolition of a crime scene um, and so you know those dark murky days um, you know that, that affect other neoliberal um, Blairite politicians again Blair and his famous Dean Agencies um, do a search on uh, uh, Dunblane, Dean Agencies, Blair Government, and, um, and that turns up some very interesting and uh, disturbing um, commentary on, on that Blair Government, uh, apart from, of course, their war crimes. Um, but, yeah, Sadiq Khan, uh, in the great tradition of London mayors, um, it looks like... Uh, you're doing your best to make a very, very low bar <laughs> even look high. Um, now, analysis, parties must break out of their comfort zones. Laura Kusenberg. Dear Laura. Um, I actually like Laura Kusenberg. I must admit, I've got a bit of a flame which I, I carry for, for, for dear Laura. Um, but I must say that analysis paralysis does seem to be getting in the way. Um, there's very little doubt that Laura is really the boss in the relationship with uh, uh, Theresa May. Um, and Theresa May is the pig that you just cannot take to market. She's never ready to go to market. Uh, this is not a pig upon which the lipstick is ever going to work. Um, I would dearly like to ask Laura who she would like to see take over from Theresa May because that's the leadership um, question which really is the real question not Jeremy Corbyn's leadership Jeremy Corbyn um, I think uh, is a collegiate type uh, and ideal for, uh, for, 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 for cabinet government. Um, Clement Attlee and his style of leadership. Do a Google of Roy Madron and um, his, 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 his uh, Super Smart Democracy blog. And there's a very excellent piece that he wrote 18 months ago about Clement Attlee's style of leadership and uh, the more collegiate uh, uh, type of approach, which. Um, isn't really a la mode with um, British sensibilities, um, but does work. Uh, and um, uh, I did a blog about karaoke po politics, talking about authenticity and uh, artists singing their own tunes and writing their own songs and playing their own instruments. Uh, and to my prior screed regarding 
the professional sort of student union politicos and their word games and parlour games and uh, uh, their political nerdiness um, uh, apply here. Um, moving swiftly along, uh, Dan Jarvis elected City Region Mayor. Uh, there's the hospital pass of the current leader of UKIP. Um, there's the BBC Paris stuff. It's a John Curtis. I, I, I you know, quite like John Curtis. Uh, very difficult wicket that he has to bat on with all of those sort of anti-Corbyn questions flying at him from from uh, uh, even from my crush Laura Kusenberg. Um, now, as we come down further, I saw a, uh, an interesting uh, tweet. Now, Jess Phillips, uh, you can count on Jess Phillips to say something uh, uh, unhelpful to um, real socialism. Uh, just so they go off and you kick about the tree, it's actually very sensible. Um, right, where are we? Um, Chuka Chuka Amuna. Now here is a clueless politician. Um, now uh, I think Jonathan Bartley he didn't in the last election, but did the one before um, stand against Chuka Amuna. And to be honest, um, I don't carry water for for jo Jonathan Bartley, but. I, I would vote for Jonathan if I lived in Streatham. I wouldn't vote for this guy. Uh, this guy is Macron, um, the unmarché Anglais, um, just truly clueless. Um, someone must not like him because he's not doing the pint and thumb there. Um, Pointing is, is a no-no in these circles. Um, so some rough edges there still, Chucker. You need to go and take some lessons in your uh, pint and thumb from Owen Smith. Um, again, fairly uh, predictable stuff coming from Amuna, who, who immediately post breakfast, uh, Brexit in the never-ending uh, debate, showed his complete uh, contempt for the British vote uh, in saying that he didn't feel that uh, uh, his brand of elite politician should be troubling the electorate with further referenda. Um, uh, sorry Chuck, uh, you are not, uh, well in fact happily you're an endangered species in politics because you don't play your own games and you're not authentic um, but here we are now this is the one this is interesting uh, Kevin Schofield ex-editor of the Sun now runs this website called uh, politics home um, and he's very tied up with Portland communications and was very very key in the Mark Wadsworth um, Chakravarti report about anti-semitism uh, Highly, uh, what's it called, Kate Smead, uh, that press conference where that all blew up. And this is interesting, which he's, he's saying that Heidi Alexander, Alexander is planning on stepping down. Um, and sh she was one of the first uh, shadow ministers to resign ahead of uh, the second campaign against Corbyn. Um, and it has to be said that these guys are rehearsing a third go. Um, what is it? It's a sign of madness to do the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Um, but anyway, lots of that on the BBC website at the moment. But this one here is the one which... Uh, made me particularly feel well hey it would appear that um, uh, 
the establishment really cannot risk another election. Um, Brexit is going to make the May government fall. There's no two ways about that. Um, there are troubled waters ahead with this uh, uh, latest um, failed cabinet meeting to try and overturn what the House of Lords did a few days ago. And um, this government is in deep, deep trouble. But the establishment, uh, both as represented within the Labour Party, within the Tory party, I mean, I've got to say, I think the Green Party has shifted rightwards again on a promise, probably of proportional representation. Um, Brexit is a big issue uh, for the establishment, as is the union between Scotland and um, the rest of the UK. Northern Ireland, the hard border. Um, don't forget, the Conservatives are the Conservative and Unionist Party. Uh, there are issues which the establishment really don't want to risk. I mean, I'm sure they don't want to risk Boris Johnson um, becoming leader of the Tories, uh, or even worse than Boris Johnson would be Gavin Williamson, who uh, is really the most uncultured, uncouth, and ridiculous oaf, it has to be said. Um, he is a rake, a spiv, uh, the most objectionable, childish, and intellectually lightweight defence secretary I think we've probably ever had. Um, I don't like that man. That man should not have risen to any sort of uh, uh, position in British politics. Um, the Tory party isn't the Tory party anymore, that's that's for sure. Uh, Peter Hitchens is right about that, he's right about many things. Um, Theresa May is not a Conservative. I mean, it's obvious um, that many Blairite wing uh, people in the Labour Party are not socialists. It's pretty obvious too. Um, but Jeremy Corbyn is quite obviously a socialist uh, and that's the problem. Uh, and the establishment have always had a problem with socialism um, in the UK. Uh, and my own take on Jeremy Corbyn is he's actually not that radical. I, I really don't think he is. Um, he just looks radical. Um, with the bunch of rabid fascists <laughs> lined up all around him and in front of him. Uh, and that, uh, so, um, yes, he is left-wing. Yes, he is sort of of the tradition of the left-wing, which, which has always made the British establishment's hair curl. Um, uh, The ridiculous thing is, is that the Prime Minister isn't actually all that powerful. I mean, this is a silly thing to say. Um, cabinet government is designed to limit what Prime Ministers can do. Margaret Thatcher and Tony Blair did a lot to change that. But I was reading a blog that I did the other day saying this is a, an, an election of a government, not the Prime Minister or a President. Um, and uh, there was a, a sort of a basic um, discourse on, uh, on, on how our government's supposed to work. Let me see if it's still open in another uh, tab here. Let's have a look. Um, This is about um, Theresa May not being a Tory. It's a bit crude, I'm afraid. Uh, but but um, Tory works against Theresa and Conservatives under marriage down. This is uh, a good blog I did last election, analysing uh, the election in terms of uh, Lytton Crosby's own uh, uh, four key points. Um, that's Macron. 
uh, chapter of the moon as role model. Um, here we are, it's this one, there we are. Now, it's a general election, not a race for the presidency. Vote Labour into office in 2017. Now, this goes through a number of blogs that I've done over the years, but, but this here, uh, you know, bbc.co, bite-sized intermediate to modern studies. This is a learning aid that the BBC published. It's still got good stuff like that um, in there. And it talks about what the different houses do. And then this is to do with the powers of the Prime Minister. Uh, and there's a report. Here we are. Um, when preparing my study of the Prime Minister, the office and its holders since 1945, I used the Cabinet Office paper on functions of the Prime Minister and his staff, prepared in 1947. Can't be found, it can be found in the National Archives, right? Um, so I attempted to update it in 1995. It's an interesting thing actually, because if you remember uh, when Theresa May illegally um, sent RAF bombers to bomb. Syria a couple of weeks back uh, one of the things was should she have consulted Parliament first and here we are um, and one of the points here um, uh, down here somewhere um, national security uh, and it says With the Foreign Defence Secretary to use the Royal Prerogative to deploy Her Majesty's Forces in action with Parliament by convention being consulted if time allows. Well that's pretty clear, um, so she broke for that one I would say because there were plenty of time. Um, special personal responsibilities, authorisation of the use of the UK nuclear weapons including preparations of four last resort letters. Now that's an interesting one and just in closing. Um, now what's the guy called? It was Fisher, wasn't it? Um, let me just put that search term in here. Um, this is a nuclear deterrent thing. Now it's this uh, Fisher nuclear codes. Let's just have a quick look at this and see if it comes up. Here we are. Uh, Trident nuclear code skin in the game from 14th of May 2017. Um, this was uh, an American academic, um, and it was his suggestion with request with, with the respect to the uh, preventing nuclear war. Oh, there's Emily Thornbury there um, when she said bollocks to. Uh, Alan, uh, he, he resigned, didn't he? Another one of the May cabinet to have resigned. Uh, right. So, Fisher was known for a unique idea towards nuclear deterrence. Uh, my suggestion was quite simple. Um, put that needed code number in a little capsule and then implant that capsule right next to the heart of a volunteer. The volunteer would carry with him a big heavy butcher's knife as he accompanied the president. If ever the president wanted to fire nuclear weapons, the only way he could do so would be for him first, with his own hands, to kill one human being. The president says, George, I'm sorry, but tens of millions must die. He has to look at someone and realise what death is, what an innocent death is, blood on the White House carpet. It's reality brought home. When I suggested this to friends in the Pentagon, they said, my God, that's terrible. Having to kill someone would distort the president's judgment. He might never push the button. That's uh, Roger Fisher uh, in the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, March 1981. Um, not a bad idea. Um, that was on the, is this, that was the Fallon thing. Let's see. In an election on, and people need to make decisions on the basis of the truth. You just said, for example, 
want to negotiate the future of the Falkland study. I did and not. Just, I just said, yeah, come on. That's true. Just, just 20 minutes ago, you implied sitting there. Uh, so that's Emily Thornbury joshing with Michael Fallon in that, that blog there. Um, anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up and load this up to YouTube for anyone that wants to get that stream of consciousness. Um, but there we are. The stalking horses are trotting round the paddock ahead of a third leadership go at Jeremy Corbyn. Highly ill-advised, I must say. And I have to say at this stage, I don't think it will affect Labour's prospects at the next election anymore. Um, I think it may lead to some stern talkings to the some of these MPs because, frankly, they should be reselected. Um, it's it, it's treachery. Um, it, it certainly is treachery of the highest order, and it's betrayal of all of the people. Um, who really do want to see some real change. Going back to uh, uh, Lytton Crosby's um, thing, just just while we're on this, um, here we are, salience. One of them is uh, differentiation. They say that too, political differences. Where's the change? Why change? Well, if you look at the polling um, and the reasons people switch votes, why voter turnout went up in 1917 in, in 2017 it was because a lot of people felt well there's something to vote for when it's very similar um, and there seems no point in voting because you get basically Tory light or Tories and neither of them are really Tories or Tory lights they're neoliberals um, and that is the curse on politics of Tina Shear must be obeyed, there is no alternative. Well, Corbyn's greatest sin is actually marshalling a space within which that alternative to neoliberal, voodoo, ideological, austerity politics. Um, that's his greatest sin, actually saying that is an ideological and political choice, there is another choice, there is an alternative. Um, and that is something which is being seen. Uh, Farage was on floor in the European Parliament saying, you know, you look at Hungary, you look at Italy, and how the French got duped by, with Macron, Lord only knows. Um, but uh, you see what's happened in Spain, what's happened in Catalonia, what happened in, in Greece, what's happened in Portugal. Um, Spain's an interesting one uh, with Podemos and, and, and where that has got to um, but there are look, look what happened in Austria look what happened in Germany we can go on and on I mean it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in Sweden here this uh, uh, th this autumn um, Stefan Lerven slightly ahead in the polls although the sort of centre and right coalition um, if they all get together and, and uh, ignore the Sweden Democrats as they did last time round um, Lerwin may remain in power but I hope the Swedish people will keep him there because uh, uh, neoliberalism light is better than full on neoliberalism not that the light is any much better is it? it's like light cola isn't it the Whatever it's called, the aspastamanti, or whatever it, you know, the, um, you know, the sweeteners are, are, are even worse for you than um, refined sugars. Anyway, I digress and I go on, but um, that's my take on it. Um, uh, the Tories should be having the leadership thing, but the establishment want it to be deflected onto the Labour Party. If they could get rid of Corbyn, there'd be an election like a shot. And you'd have Tory light, i.e. a Blairite, New Labour a monstrosity uh, running the company, country like a shot, but nothing actual. Um, in the same way that the EU hasn't changed, and it should change. Uh, people do not want neoliberalism anymore. 
neoliberalism has failed. Simple as that. It's failed. It doesn't work. And there is reams and reams and reams of empirical evidence to show that the theories do not work. They have been falsified. It is a dead ideology. It does not work. It is a theory that has been found out, exposed and otherwise uh, discredited, not least by the huge corruption engendered in Buchanan's public choice theory. For goodness sake, um, it's a false god. It's a false idol. It is broken. It is broke. Do fix it. And Corbyn is not the problem that the establishment faces. The establishment faces the problem that it is populated by half-baked, hair-brained, inexperienced, non-questioning, non-critically thinking, half-arsed, half-wits. Um, and frankly, uh, we can do better. Um, I mean, the civil service still takes the cream of the intellectual crop of, of, of the British output. That that doesn't that doesn't hasn't and will not ever change. Um, and there is a problem in that they don't like the idea of a socialist prime minister. Um, but if they sit down and they are truly honest with themselves, they will know that it doesn't make a haper worth of difference. Um, it's just they may be embarrassed when they sort of sit down and bump briefcases with the other sort of uh, policy wonks uh, from other uh, regimes or whatever. Um, but it's the people who are in charge, and if the people want Corbyn, they will have Corbyn. And um, for all the difference it will make, and this is hair splitting, this is, uh, you know, the continual snatching defeat from the jaws of victory in a, you know, a world of potential abundance and happiness, love and connectedness and conscious raising and all that stuff um, it's people clinging to this failed Calvinist uh, idea um, of the poor must be kept poor to keep them obedient that's where this all stems back to um, it's religious quasi religious um, you know that's the green kind of puritanism of Caroline Lucas uh, I mean basically a green fascist but um, it's, a, it's an authoritarian ideology that denies free will and doesn't trust people with free will. Um, is Jeremy Corbyn a Stalinist authoritarian or a Leninist authoritarian? No, I don't think he's even a revolutionary socialist. I mean, in fact, demonstrably not. Um, and then, of course, there are Marxist theori theoreticians that cling to Marx's uh, revolutionary theory, um, which is something Marx was plainly wrong about. Um, he was right about a lot of other things. Um, but uh, the Communist Manifesto and the le revolutionary theory, particularly as interpreted by Lenin, was wrong. Um, no shame in being wrong when you're writing in the 1860s or 1850s and expecting that to apply even 50 years later, certainly 100 years later. Come on, keep up. Um, now, I mean, I think Corbyn's probably got a good dose of uh, uh, the ideology of, 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 of Paolo Freire, which, which is a Praxeological uh, approach to Marxist liberation theory, but not liberal, uh, not, not, uh, 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 and his great work, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Um, and frankly, the civil service should read, study, and learn, 
and so should the Tory party because uh, conservatism is not I think opposed to the ideas of uh, it's supposed to be about liberty I mean Edmund Burke you read Edmund Burke I mean these days I mean he, he, he'd get blackballed out of the club <laughs> um, and, uh, and then just one final shout out for Eugene Debs uh, Eugene Debs in my Twitter feed I, I um, uh, read a quote on my blog the other day and it turned out it was from Eugene Debs and it was a very interesting uh, quote about banking and, 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 and war and um, basically saying uh, well, if the bankers want a war well let them let them leave from the front uh, quite right too uh, let them carry the briefcase for the nuclear codes as well. Um, and then another thing, isn't it, really? Um. <laughs>